Hi, I'm Max Walker-Williams and today I'm going to give you a tour of our amazing project on Newgate Street in Chester. It's going to be the Hotel Chester. It's not, I just mean, it's these two and can you see them? Hello! <laughs> Sorry. I'm filming a film, yeah? Hi, my name's Max Walker-Williams and today I'm here at Newgate Street in Chester to have a look and give you guys a tour of our latest hotel project for The Hotel Chester, a five-star hotel here in the amazing city of Chester. <laughs> The sash wooden windows behind me, and you'll see many of them throughout the building. A massive wall of pipes. Most of them don't actually do anything. So we'll have our Hypnos bed up here for the kids. As you can see, this is a proper building site, and as always with all our projects, if you've seen any of our videos before, we always work from the top down, not the bottom up. The reason for this is we don't want to track a load of mud and dirt through the building, uh, which we wouldn't be if we were working upwards. So here on the ground floor, you come in through the rain door just behind me there, and you'll be greeted by what will be the reception. We've got amazing wood panels on the walls that are original to the building. The building was built in circa 1782, which is about the same time that America was being discovered. So you can imagine when this building was being built, the guys, the builders, the workmen, they would have been having conversations about this new world that was being discovered. It's just, I, I love history and I think that's absolutely amazing. And as you see, as we walk around, there's loads of historical uh, bits and bobs uh, of real interest. The wood panelling in the reception on the walls isn't original from when the building was built, but it is over 100 years old and I think it's amazing. It's currently covered to keep it protected from all the dust and building work, but eventually we'll be taking off all this protective cover and revealing the amazing woodwork for people to enjoy. As you can see, the panelling continues to the staircase that takes you up to the apartments above. As you come off the first floor landing, you're greeted into this huge hallway with apartments off it. Part of that is this amazing wall that we've built and we're going to have glass uh, going in these sections that will allow people on the other side of the staircase to see the space and people going towards the stairs to just catch glimpses of the stairs and that amazing panelling. We're now in the first apartment and as you can see it's nearly finished. The colour is absolutely amazing. If you want to know any of the colours or any of the materials that we use in the making of any of these videos, please feel free to leave a comment below and I'll get back to you with which colour paint, where we got it from and so on and so forth. In this apartment you can see the kitchen's just going in and it sits really seamlessly, being the same colour or very similar colour to the walls. So you know it's there but it just sort of sits quietly in the background of what will be an amazing living room space. The sash wooden windows behind me, and you'll see many of them throughout the building, look brand new but they're actually over 200 years old. Our guys have painstakingly repaired and reinstated the windows, got them back working seamlessly like a brand new window and brought them back to life. But as I say, they're over 200 years old. From the living room, you come through to the ensuite bedroom. This, we're gonna have a double bed here, and you can see we've got sockets on the left, right, and the center of the wall. The reason for that is because this is going to be a hotel, we sometimes split the beds. So you might be staying with someone that you're happy to share the bedroom with, but don't necessarily wanna share a bed with. If that's the case, you just let us know when you're booking, and we actually physically split the beds Having three sockets means that when it's a double and all together as a super king, you have a socket on either side of the beds to go with the uh, bedside tables. When we split it, you still have a socket in the middle and you lose one of the sockets to the left or right. So it means that you can still have bedside tables. Across from the bed, on the chimney breast wall, you see we have the sockets and the TV aerial and the USB port ready for the TV. You'll notice that most of the sockets and fixtures and fittings are either brushed brass or brushed aluminium. Behind the TVs, they're always plastic. The reason for this is because they're not as proud, so they don't sit out quite as far and push the TV away from the wall. And it's an added expense that no one will ever see. Just across from the corridor, we have the second apartment here. As you walk in, you walk into the living room, but this will double up as a bedroom as well. So in this space, we'll have a sofa bed in the, uh, on the wall here opposite the TV but it's also a sofa bed. So if, you have, uh, if you're staying with young children or it's two separate couples, one couple can be in the master bedroom and another couple can stay on the sofa bed. 
Um, if you come with children, obviously the parents can stay on the master bed and the children can stay on the sofa bed. Which couple stays on which bed is something you're gonna to have to argue about. Hidden away out the corner is the kitchen. So I really, really like this kitchen. Again, it matches the colors of the walls and it just really fits in uh, really well. There was a period of time where we went through a fashion of making the kitchens really pop and stand out. But in these apartments, that isn't really practical and it's not something we're looking to do. We want the kitchen to be there for people to use practically, but we're not looking to make a statement with the kitchens or have the kitchen stand out or be in your face at all. We want people to enjoy the space. Kitchen's there if you need it. If you don't need it, it doesn't stand out. We're now into the bedroom. And this is a really, really special bedroom. And in fact, we've had a CGI, which stands for Computer Generated Image, created of this very room. Bill, can we do that cool thing where it cuts in with a picture of what it's gonna look like? So this is it now, and this is what it's gonna look like. So the layout of the bedroom, as you've already seen on the CGI, hopefully, is the bed is just over there between the two sockets, as always. We always have dimmer switches as well next to the beds, so you can switch off the main light as well as your bedside tables from bed. Nothing worse than having the main lights on in bed, getting really comfortable watching TV or whatever, and then having to get out of bed to turn the lights off. Over there we have the ensuite. Above me we have the TV built into the wall with a fire below. The reason we've been able to build the TV into the wall like that is because we had to build a new fake wall in front of the original chimney breast in order to fit the fire in. So while we're building that stud wall out for the fire, we may as well create a recess above it for the TV to sit seamlessly into the wall. Next to that is gonna be the ensuite. And these monsters are the tiles for the ensuite. I wouldn't wanna fit them. The bigger they are, the harder they are to fit, and the heavier they are. Next to the ensuite, we also have the piece de la resistance, a freestanding bath at the end of the bed, which I'm really, really excited uh, to see finished. These huge pipes, one is hot water coming in, and one is cold water coming in. The reason these ones are so big is because the bath is really, really substantial. About 800 liter, no, it's not 800 liters, that's that fucking mental. The reason these are so big is because the bath is so big. So there's nothing worse than having a big, luxurious bath, turn the tap on, and a little pathetic dribble. So what you want is quick fill, bath, hot, lovely. And that's what these pipes, massive pipes, will achieve. Okay, let's have a look at the ensuite. Well, you know how to use a shower. The blue room. Okay, this isn't really a blue room. A bit like um, some of the other projects that we've done, and I've shown you that the green isn't actually paint, but it's for a purpose of for bonding plaster to walls. This equally has a purpose. It's not a paint colour. It's not an unusual paint choice for a bathroom. It's actually tanking. So it's a tanking paint. It's the same stuff they use when they make swimming pools. So this whole ensuite, because we've got the bath in the bedroom, we have this whole room for shower and toilet. So as you can see here, you've got a hot and cold pipe. This will run up to a shower head, which is going to sit here. You've got a freestanding floating toilet uh, next to it, and then the basin just uh, to my right there. What that means is you can walk in, there's no shower tray, there's no glass, you walk in and the whole room can get wet and there's not going to be any issues for the guests or the reception desk below. The other thing that's interesting in this room is if this whole room is a wet room, where does all the water go? And there's going to be a lot of water because it's an eight inch shower head. This whole metal bar you can see on the floor here is the drain. So there's, again, there's nothing worse, lovely powerful shower and you stood in a puddle of cold water that isn't draining away quick enough. So we've created this whole length of the room, the whole width of the room is the drain. In this apartment, we had an old chimney breast that ran through the property. We've introduced this RSJ and the supports either side, but we thought rather than just put this uh, stud wall in front to make this flush, we'd actually leave it recessed and use it for the bed space. So the headboard will sit inside this frame with the bed at the bottom of the headboard. And then we've got these beautiful spotlights that we've put in to make a feature of where the bed sits. The bathroom in this apartment is a bit further on than the one we've just seen. Let's have a look. But the reason this door is so big and so wide, so tall and so wide, is that we actually have glass going in this. So there's a glass strip here and then the glass door to the bathroom. The reason for that is that it's unique, it looks a bit different, and also it makes, it doesn't infringe on the room and make the room smaller. So light can travel from the bathroom into the apartment and from the apartment into the bathroom, which makes the whole space seem a bit bigger. We are frosting it up to about yay high, and then we have a few frosting stripes along the top. So I'm now where the shower is going to be. You can see, as I said earlier, we have the tiles on top, 
with the tanking underneath that. And here, you can just see, there's the tanking, and this part is waiting for the shower tray. So once the shower trays arrive, we install them in here, seal them in, and then that makes this completely waterproof. In this apartment, the windows are a bit different to all of the others. We wanted to keep these like this because they were different when we bought the property. I don't know why these weren't sash like all the others, but they were too rotten to save. So our guys have copied them and there's no way of telling that these aren't original. We've even used the same opening and locking mechanism, which work really well. This apartment's really special because the front door to this apartment is on a different floor to the apartment itself. So once you come through the front door, you're greeted by this beautiful entrance hall and this original banister. Now, the reason we know this is original to the property is because each one of the spindles is ever so slightly different and that's because they've been made by hand and not been cut by a machine. The other clue to this banister being original is the height of it. If I stand on this step, you can see, okay, I'm a little bit taller than the average, I suppose, but you can see it's a miles off me. Now, I don't ever struggle with banisters in any buildings, uh, modern buildings, but you can see how far away that newel post is from my hand at normal height. That's because obviously people have grown taller as generations have moved on. So this would have been a completely normal handrail 300 years ago. So from the front door of the apartment, you start coming up to the stairs. And what's going to be really exciting is that there's going to be foliage on both of these walls. So as you walk up, it's not going to be this plain pink that you see at the moment. But it's going, there's going to be loads of flowers and foliage. Now, I don't really understand how that all works and what it's going to look like at the end. That's Laura's job. But I'm sure it'll look amazing and I can't wait to see it for myself. And I can't wait to show you guys. So as you can see, this room's uh, theme is really, really different to anything we've seen before. It's a lot darker, but I think once all the F and F, which stands for fixtures and fittings, uh, that's all the loose stuff that you don't need tools to put in. So anything like a bed, a chair, rugs, all that sort of stuff, anything that goes into a room, a property, a house, whatever, that doesn't require tools is considered F and F. Once that F and F is in here, I think it'll really soften the room up, but at the moment we're looking at it bare. What's really, really nice about this particular apartment is the height and the pitch roof. We have the trusses, and you've seen those in other videos. If you've watched any of my other videos, we renovate a lot of older properties, and a lot of them have trusses. And one of my favorite things is to take the ceiling back up, expose the truss, sand it back, beeswax, and polish it and bring it out. And people really love those original features. And this apartment has two buttes. The truss on this one on this side actually cuts through this wall and goes, carries on through the ensuite, which makes it extra special. Next to the truss, you'll probably notice a white disc. The first person to comment and tell me what that is wins a free night stay at the hotel. This is the kitchen to this apartment. Um, there's not really much to say. Uh, four walls, kitchen, empty room at the moment, but I'm sure it's gonna look amazing. And you know I love a truss and look at those bad boys. So in this apartment, the unique selling point in this one is the double jacuzzi bath. So it's a his and hers, or his and his, or hers and hers jacuzzi bath, and it's actually molded to the human body. So when you get in it, it's not just a flat bottom jacuzzi, it actually curves and follows the body. It changes color, has about a thousand different jets. Um, it's got a waterfall, huge waterfall tap. Um, it's got DAB digital radio. It's also got Bluetooth, so you can connect your own music to it. We're not really a party type hotel, but I thought we'd go all out with this one. We've super soundproofed this room so people can have a bit of fun and not disturb anybody else. But the nightmare that we've had is the tiles. They're a metre by 600 centimetres wide. They're massive. And as I said downstairs, the bigger the tile, the harder they are to fit. And unfortunately, the tiler that was instructed to do this wasn't up to the task. So as you can see to my right, we've actually had to smash all the tiles off and rebuild the wall. You can see, Finished, not even started. Um, really, really disappointing. Very, very expensive tile, all gone in a skip. Really, really wasteful, really disappointing. So this is the main corridor that connects number 17 to number 19. It'll be the way that guests get from number 19 where reception is to number 17 where their room might be. You can see that we've just illuminated this corridor, which is gonna look amazing. See this massive wall of pipes. Most of them don't actually do anything, it's just that Ali the plumber likes to charge us a lot of money and so he installs pipes that go nowhere and do absolutely nothing in order to put in the big, big bills. So behind me is the street. At the moment you can see that we've got those solid barn doors. They're going to be replaced with glass from floor to ceiling doors. That means that at the garden that end, glass doors, 
at the street scene, glass doors, people walking past, won't be able to get in, but they will be able to see through this beautiful corridor and into the garden below, which will hopefully entice people into the hotel and the restaurant. Above us, before the ceiling gets suspended, you can actually see everything that goes in to making a hotel work properly. All the pipe work, all the wires, all the waste, miles and miles and miles of pipes and cables. We're now going to have a look at my favourite apartment. As you can see, there's a, a frame here which is going to contain a massive window. So this is the front door for the apartment, and like next door, this apartment front door is on a different floor to the apartment itself, which I think is really cool to have your own private staircase in your apartment. So we've got the front door to the apartment here, and then this huge window out into the public space. So anyone coming up can see through the window and see my private staircase, but nothing more. Through the front door, you come up the stairs, and you're greeted by this amazing high ceiling with an original A-frame. Now, what's really, really amazing about this A-frame is that we all know how old this building is now, you know, 300, circa 300 years old. But what's truly amazing about this A-frame is that this wood is from a ship. And we know that from the way it was carved and the way it's weathered and aged, which means that that wood has been in a ship for 100 years. It's then been decommissioned as a ship and used in this property, which is 300 years old which means this A-frame is at least 400 years old. So you've come in through the front door, which is below us, you've come up the amazing staircase, and then you're greeted by another massive window. The other side of this window, we have a two-storey chandelier that will be affixed to the ceiling above and drop all the way through. So first of all, through the door, stairs, amazing A-frame, double high ceilings, and as you come around the stairs, you're just gonna be greeted by this picture frame of this incredible chandelier. Above the chandelier, we have this, the Vullock skylight. Now, that's connected to the fire alarm. Because this is a main means of escape, that will open in the event of a fire and allow all the smoke to rise up through the building and not get caught up in this area here. We're now in the living room of what will be my favorite apartment. And what's really, really unusual about this one is the valley that we have in the ceiling. So what that means is, in, in most uh, rooms that you've ever been in, there'll either be a flat ceiling or a pitch ceiling, like that. This one has got one pitch ceiling this side and another half pitch that side. Really, really unusual to see because valleys are where water collects and it can cause massive ingress, which means leaks and problems in the future. So we've inherited this and I absolutely love it. We now have the technology today that means that valleys are less of an issue. You know, we can waterproof them externally on the roof and make sure that there'll never be an issue. It's an extra expense, uh, it's an extra effort, but I think it's something well worth it because you're left with a ceiling that's really, really unusual. Each of the apartments has their own job stand. This is a job stand. On the job stand is the job sheet. On the job sheet is a description with the apartment number. So this is apartment 17. Paint, where it's being painted. So in this one, wall, ceiling, skirts and door. F and B means Farrow and Ball. Strong white, 2001. Toilets, different color. Tiles, make, color. And then which carpet it's going to have. The beds and the headboards. So are they super king? Are they king size? Are they super king split? Um, and then you also have the kitchen, what color it is, what color the splashback is, and also the wardrobes. We're now in the bedroom of my favorite apartment. And look at this. We're gonna have the bed up against this wall here that we've built, and the headboard is this bit here. So what is the headboard? The he this is a frame waiting for a massive piece of glass. It's one seamless piece of glass, and this separates the bed from the shower. So we've got double power showers, one here, and one here with the heads coming out of the ceiling. So you'll be able to stand with the rainfall shower above you. This will be clear glass, and the other side of that is the bed with the TV on the wall there. I really can't wait to see people's reactions to this one. I think they're either gonna love it or hate it. Thank you for taking this tour of our latest and most exciting project on Newgate Street, Chester. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a like. And don't forget, if you wanna see the project finished, and I certainly do, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit that bell so you get a reminder, a notification when it's ready.